Hello and welcome back to Bestie Chats with Soph. All right, everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the safe space. We have got some things to discuss. We've got some big things to discuss. First of all, the most obvious, we have some bats here, okay? Really went ham with these little sticker bats that I got on Amazon. They're like all over my kitchen. They're just so cute. They're like $6. I'm like, how can I not post these all over my apartment? So that's the most obvious. Second, I don't know if you recognize me, but yes, I colored my hair. I did it. These are my natural roots, you guys. I'm looking at myself in the camera and it's just, I still am shocked every time I look in a mirror. I'm like, I cannot believe I did this. The color of my eyebrows is now the same color as my hair. Hasn't been that way in, I don't know, like seven years. I think the last time I had my original hair color was my freshman year of high school. My mom started box dyeing my hair in the kitchen my sophomore year and then of high school and then I got my hair professionally colored my sophomore year of college and I've just kind of been going blonder and blonder and blonder since. And then I went the most blonde I've ever been July of this past summer. And then I just decided to change it up. I'm like getting extensions out, my hair extensions, lash extensions are out, hair is back to natural color. Like I just can't believe it, it's honestly crazy but I feel so much more like myself. I do still get Botox, lip filler, you know, all of that fun stuff, but overall, overall, okay, I'm still, I'm still true to who I am on the inside, but I really do feel so much better. Like I feel like my, I didn't even know what I was trying to do or trying to solve with getting my hair done, but I really do feel like I am back to my roots, no pun intended. So that's kind of the only life updates that I have. Nothing really too interesting going on, but we do have some things to chat about when it comes to books, okay? I finished It Happen One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This was the book that I updated you guys on last week. It is finished and honestly, really, really cute. It was so cheesy, super corny. Um, it's like rom-com. It's like every rom-com movie out there. You know exactly what's gonna happen the whole time. Some good spicy scenes, I'd say one out of five for spiciness, um, but just such a cute book. I would definitely recommend this to anybody who is beginning to get into romance, you know, spicy books. 10 out of 10 would recommend this. Just really, really cute read. However, okay, so, all right. We have a lot to unpack here. So I started Priest by Sierra Simone. Okay, so, okay, 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 okay. This is how we're gonna do it. Let me just read the first page, part of the first page to you, okay? It goes, uh, several months ago, I broke my vow of celibacy on the altar of my own church and God help me, I would do it again. I am a priest and this is my confession. Excuse me, sir, what? <laughs> okay, I picked up this book. Obviously, I felt like I knew what it was gonna be about, but I really didn't. I didn't really look at like the book, I just picked it up. I'm like, oh, this looks kind of spicy. And then you guys really warned me about it. And I understand, okay? So I am on chapter, I'm on chapter seven right now. And it's a weird read for me. It's a little uncomfortable because I went to private Catholic school for 12 years. Like my first, up until high school, you guys, my first public university, like schooling that I went to where I got to wear free dress, Okay, I mean, normal clothes, but if you went to private school, you know free dress was like everything. That I got to wear regular clothes was college when I went to Oregon for my first two years. So growing up in the Catholic church, I'm not practicing anymore right now, um, but super weird for me to read, okay? Because I've done the whole thing. I've been to confession a million times. I've talked to so many priests in my life. I have been an altar server. I sang in choir. I, I did the whole thing. I went to school for 12 years in a Catholic church, okay? So reading this from the perspective of a priest makes me really weirded out because I've been in confession and I've been in the confession where you like don't see the priest and you go on the wall and they're like, you're talking to them and everything. And it's weird because I'm like, what if he, what if the priest I've been talking, that I talked to like felt those same things? Like it's really uncomfortable. So I will say trigger wording, if you were raised in the Catholic church, 
I don't know if I would recommend this. I'm still gonna read it because I have a curious mind, okay? But I will say that Sierra Simone, I do love the way that she writes. I love the way that she writes. I do not wanna put this book down. Like I literally just started this book. I don't wanna put it down. I'm like very curious to like keep reading it. Um, but it's a little, it's a little weird. Okay. So I would, I would take caution with this. If you go to church, if you know about, you know, Catholic religion, anything like that, um, I'm just giving you a warning now. It's a little strange. It's a little strange. Okay. We're just going to get into it. We're going to get into the episode today. We're going to talk about college. How the heck do you balance health and fitness, living a health and lifestyle while you are deep in college? in the partying scene, you know, in living on your own for the first time, balancing drama, friends, boys, girls, school, work, I mean, everything. It's, it's insane. It's the best experience ever, but it's a lot. And it can be really, really stressful to try to figure it out, okay? And I'm gonna give you my best pieces of advice on how I kind of tried to live a healthy-ish lifestyle while in college. So let me just give you a little bit of a background of my college experience. It's so crazy because I started my TikTok and my fitness Instagram my senior year of college. So I was working full time. I was just, I had barely any classes left of school. I was graduating. I was like on my way out of college, of the college scene. And I feel like so basically you guys on social media have not seen me in college. I didn't post about that because TikTok wasn't really a huge thing. My first two and a half years of school, like it didn't really exist. Honestly, it was not a thing at all. So I never posted about balance in college because I was pretty much on my way out when things kind of started to pick up for me. But let me tell you, I did it all. I did the whole college thing, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down to you and give you guys a little bit of a background of my college experience. So starting off, I have my bachelor's in journalism with an emphasis in public relations and advertising. I have my minor in business administration. Also during my senior year, I got my certification in personal training. And then I also became a cycling certified instructor. And then right now I'm studying to get my certification in nutrition. So that's kind of my resume for y'all. For my first two years, I went to the University of Oregon and I was bullied within my sorority and I ended up transferring schools to University of Nevada, Reno here in Reno, Nevada, AKA it's called UNR. Those are like, you know, the acronym for it. And yeah, now here I am today, a year and a half later, graduated out of school. I feel like I'm fully still in my post-grad life, post-grad blues. What a crazy, crazy, crazy time after college graduating. It's insane. But my first two years at Oregon, when they were fun, they were so fun. My sister was a senior. I was a freshman. I was in, you know, I hate saying this, ill, but I was in one of the top sororities there. My sister was in the sorority too. I mean, I had so much fun when it was fun. Wednesday through Sunday, it was just like, we were a date dash, then a party, then frat basement party, then we were going out, then we were doing all this stuff. I mean, it was nonstop and it was so much fun when it was fun until it wasn't. But I did that whole thing. I also at the same time was trying to figure out what I was doing with my life in the sense of staying active because I played lacrosse, soccer and lacrosse, but I played lacrosse all the way up until my senior year of high school. I was committed to play division one lacrosse and then I decommitted my senior year of high school. So when I got to college, it was my first time ever where I didn't have practice to go to. I didn't have games. I didn't have conditioning I had to meet. I mean, it was such a weird period of time because I'm like, what am I supposed to do when I don't have a coach telling me what to do, right? And I could eat whatever I wanted to. And I didn't have any repercussions because I was working out like so hard, you know, all of those years. So I had kind of this huge shock of like, okay, I'm going to, you know, the rec facility, the student, you know, rec center and figuring out the machines and really going into the gym for kind of like the first time. And I was like, wow, this is really intimidating and really scary. So I also started from literally square one. It may seem like I have it all figured out now, which by the way, I do not, but I know exactly where so many women are, how intimidating, how scary, how confusing this whole college experience is when it comes to specifically how to balance health and fitness. Now I could spend a whole entire epi other episode talking about 
getting bullied in college, having to transfer schools, um, standing up to your bullies. I mean, like that experience was honestly, it feels like a dream. It doesn't even feel like it really happened because it was such an insane time. And it was really traumatic for me that I think I like pushed down, like pushed down and pushed away a lot of those experiences that I don't even like remember it. But I will say that we can chat about that. If you guys want to, I've never really talked about it on my social media before, uh, but I'm happy to do that. If you guys want me to talk about girl drama on all of that stuff, I'm more than happy to get into that. So basically I did the dang thing. I did it. I did the whole college experience. I did the sorority. I did the boy drama. I did the friend drama. I did the transferring, the work life balance, all of that stuff. I did it all. So I feel for you. I feel for you. And I have so many notes that I wrote out for you guys. So excuse me if I'm looking at my phone. I have so many notes that I wrote out on my phone. Like I wrote out this entire like episode today because I was just going off last time. Like, okay, this is what I want to share. Like whatever, this, that, the other. But I'm going to share with you three things that I believe helped me balance health and fitness in college. Now, I could give you the basics of, you know, get in your protein intake, drink enough water, you know, find time to study and dedicate an hour a day to study and like, whatever. I could give you the basics if I want to, but I'm going to tell you three things that I feel like people don't talk about enough or pieces of advice that I would give you if you are still in school, how to live a healthy lifestyle, how to balance it all. All right. Number one, work out in the morning, work out in the morning. I experimented throughout my entire college experience on what was the best time to work out. I had classes at all different hours of the day, starting at 8am, going all the way up until 8pm at night. And I experimented so much with what was the best time to go? Was it after my first class? Was it in the middle of the day? Was it an evening lift? No, I always came back to six to 8am workouts. If I had an 8 a.m., I was getting to the gym at 5.30 and then I was heading straight to my class. You know, I didn't even need to shower, change, whatever. You just, you don't need to do that. It's fine unless you're like drenched in sweat, shower off at the gym, but you can just throw on another pair of pants and walk your butt to class. But working out from 6 to 8 a.m. in the morning, I would even do that even if I had my first class was at 11 a.m. or noon, I would still get up and work out early in the morning. It is the absolute best time Time to go. There are so many benefits to morning workouts. And it's funny because I'm saying this as a person who works out during the afternoon now, but I don't need to work out from 6 to 8 a.m. I mean, sometimes I like to, but it's not necessary for me to go at that time now during school when I had school, work, you know, trying to figure out when I was going to hang out with my boyfriend and hang out with my friends or go out to date dash or, you know, go out to party or whatever it was trying to figure all that out. It's best to get it done in the morning. And I'm going to give you guys the benefits of working out in the morning. Number one, you get it over with. You get it over with. I mean, that's the most simple thing is that it's done for the day. Your workout is done for the day. You showed up, you got it done, and, and that's that, you did it. Number two is the post-workout endorphins. Those happy endorphins that you feel after your workout, it starts your day off strong. It gets your, your mind, your body moving. I mean, it's, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel good, which then, the next one is it makes you want to eat healthier. You probably are more inclined to eat healthy throughout the day to properly fuel your body because you got your workout done. So you're like, I started my day off strong. I want to continue to eat healthy throughout the day. Like I don't want to you know, work really hard for two hours of my workout and then fill my body with crap foods. Like you want to fuel your body properly. Now the next one, surprisingly enough, is you will have more energy throughout the day. Now, if you're already a morning workout person, you already know this. You would think you would have less energy because you're waking up earlier and you know, you're doing a really hard workout in the morning and you feel like probably by noon you'd crash and you feel super tired. No, it's quite the opposite. It gives you an energy and caffeine boost that you would never even know what's there. It gives you such good energy throughout the day, which then also allows you to sleep better at night. It helps you sleep better at night. Anytime I go to the gym in the evening time, I have trouble 
powering down my brain and my body because I have those post-workout endorphins pump in and I'm like I cannot settle down right now because I was just at the gym an hour ago and it's eight o'clock at night like that for me is too much so I love the fact that when you work out in the morning you go you know you get it done with you're feeling your body throughout the day and then by like five six o'clock at night you're like I don't have to worry about going to the gym you can really start to power down and also when you work out in the morning get any type of movement in it actually improves your focus and your cognition and your brain function it makes you less foggy I mean the benefits are endless so basically long story short number one piece of advice is work out in the morning and get it done with in the morning now the second piece of advice that I have for you is to have a plan with your nutrition I remember the first time that I went grocery shopping my sophomore year of college because I lived in the dorms my freshman year so I was eating dorm food when I lived in a house like off campus and I had to go grocery shopping at Trader Joe's for the first time alone really in my life like full grocery shopping I mean like I would go grocery shopping alone in high school but I would be to pick up one or two things but this was like I am having to feed myself all alone what the heck am I gonna get at Trader Joe's I was so lost in the store. I didn't even know like what to do. I did frozen meals galore because I was like, I don't know how to make like me. Like, how am I supposed to make this chicken? Like that looks disgusting and I don't know how to make it. Like it's scary. What if it's raw? What if I get sick? All the things like I remember grocery shopping for the first time and it being the scariest experience of my life. And that led to I wouldn't say it led to an unhealthy relationship with nutrition, but because I didn't have a plan and didn't know what to do, I tend to not eat as much throughout the week, which was not helpful towards my mind, my body, my health. You know, I was wondering why I was working so hard at the gym and I was not seeing any changes in my body. It was because I wasn't properly fueling my body because I didn't have a plan. Now, whether that's planning out your meals for the week, you know, your Sunday through Thursday or Monday through Friday meals, your breakfast, lunch, dinner, you plan it out, you grocery shop for those specific meals, you have those for the week, or I'm about to blow your mind, prep your ingredients. Prep your ingredients. If you like to prep meals, prep them. If you like to do that, do that. I'm not telling you not to do that. But if you don't like eating the same meals every day, do what I do. It has literally changed my life. Shop for certain ingredients, prep those diverse ingredients, things that you can throw into multiple dishes, have them fully made and ready in the fridge. You're good to go for four or five days. Now, let me give you an example of this. For me, every single week still, I've been prepping my ingredients for over a year and a half now. These are the same things that I prep every single time. So I always have chicken breasts already cooked, prepped in the fridge. I have ground turkey and ground beef. I usually like to mix them together. I'll do two packets of ground turkey and one of ground beef. Also, I live with my boyfriend, so he eats a lot. So we have to prep a lot of this, but I'll do ground turkey and ground beef prepped together. I do taco seasoning with that. So I have a giant like bowl of ground beef and ground turkey already prepped with taco seasoning in the fridge. Um, I have onions and bell peppers prepped. I will have obviously like my egg carton and egg whites in the fridge. I'll have my white rice prepped. I'll have frozen sweet potato fries. And then all of my veggies I keep frozen. So my broccoli is like my main veggie of, you know, that I like to pick, uh, keep that frozen. So I pop that in the air fryer, heat it up for five, six minutes in the air fryer. It's good to go. So when you prep your ingredients, you're able to throw it into multiple meals. You can make a taco bowl. You can make a chicken bowl. You can make a burrito. You can make, you know, a chicken sandwich. You can do, um, even some pasta, throw the, you know, ground turkey, ground beef in there, or even the chicken. There's so many different things that you can do. You can make a quesadilla. I mean, there's like there, the list goes on. Okay. Have all of those prepped in the fridge and ready to go. So when you walk in the fridge, you don't see raw chicken in there that needs to be cooked. Cause when you're starving, there is nothing worse than going to the fridge and having uncooked produce or uncooked meat in there that you have to take 20 minutes to fully cook through and season and do all of that. Like nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. So already have it prepped. I kid you not, it's going to save your life and get creative with meals. I'm going to tell you right now, one of my favorite meals, don't judge me, 
is sweet potato fries that I pop in the air fryer for six or seven minutes. And then I have my ground turkey and ground beef that's already prepped. I heat that up in the microwave for 20 seconds. I put that over the ground turkey beef and ground turkey. I put that over the sweet potato fries. I put a little bit of ketchup on it. It tastes like a burger in a bowl. It is freaking delicious. But I came up with that on my own because I didn't have any rice left. So I couldn't make a, make a taco bowl. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Like I have nothing left. I was like, oh, I have sweet potato fries. Like maybe this will taste good together. Now it's one of my favorite meals. Get creative with it. Okay. Get creative with it. But that I swear prepping your ingredients will change your life. Okay. So I lied. We have two more things to cover. I just came up with a fourth thing that I want to discuss with you. We've gone over the first two. We've gone over working out early. Just get it done. Just get it done with, trust me, at least four days a week. I would say three to four days a week. Go to the gym early before your classes. You're going to love yourself for it. The second thing, nutrition. Have a plan with your nutrition. Okay. It's going to save your life. Now, we went over movement. We went over nutrition. These last two things we're going to talk about is targeted towards your mental health. I believe that mental health is far, far, far more important than physical doing all of that stuff. Okay. If you're not taking care of what's on the inside first, you're going to have really, really a hard time progressing in your journey physically and feeling good about that entire process. So make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Dang it. Okay. Now we're going to get really comfy for this because we're, we're about to go. We're about to go in. The third thing we're going to talk about is something I didn't do. So this is advice from somebody who didn't do this, who wished that I did this. And that is to take time for yourself. Okay. For the most part, this is not for everybody, but for the most part, college is a period of time where you are just scratching the surface of what it's like to do things by yourself and for yourself because you are living, you know, away from your family or whatever it is. The circumstance looks different for everybody, but for, you know, the most part, you're really starting to kind of do things on your own now. I wish that I practiced being alone a lot earlier than I did. I wish that I got comfortable with being alone way, way earlier than I did because the post-grad life is extremely lonely out of nowhere. You go from living with or directly next to or down the street, some of your best friends that you'll ever meet in your life, your future bridesmaids, the godparents of your children, to living across the country from them in a matter of three days. Once you graduate, you're, you're out in a week. Everyone's just either back home, they're moving to their new job. And it happened so quickly. The four years of your life go by so fast that nobody really warned you about that. And like, like I mentioned, the post-grad life is crazy. However, I think this is going to help you significantly with post-grad life is start to be comfortable with being alone. Take yourself out on dates, take yourself out on a coffee date, go shopping alone. One of my favorite literal favorite things to do in college alone was to post up at the library for like three to six hours and do all of my homework for the week, all of my studies, anything that I needed to do, I would go alone. I would never go to the library with friends because we would just mess around. I would never get work done. I would pick a spot in the library in a dark corner, absolutely alone, pop my earphones in and go ham with studying. And it was some of my favorite alone time that I had. I mean, something about a library and being alone and busting your butt in there and getting all of your work done. When you walk out, you feel like a million times better. That was one of my favorite things that I did in college to be by myself and be comfortable with being alone. Now, I also suggest take a night in when everybody goes out there. You will never find a place quieter than you're either your dorm room or your, you know, if you live in a satellite house or a live out or a sorority or whatever, when everybody goes out and you're the only one that like one of the only ones that stays home and you can hear a pin drop and you do a little bit of self care, I promise you, you're not missing anything major. I know you might have FOMO, but taking those days and nights to stay in when everybody else goes out, waking up, not hungover, feeling refreshed when everybody is on their deathbed. Not that it's like, you know, you're better than them for doing that. But at least once in a blue moon, don't feel like you have to attend everything and 
go out and always socialize, right? Make sure to recharge yourself and recharge your social battery and spend time by yourself and do things that other people aren't doing. So if everybody's going out, stay in one night and just really do some self care, get some really good sleep, get a good meal in, like you have the entire place to yourself. It's, it's the most self care that you could do and, and get creative, get creative, do things that you like to do alone, whether it's walking, hiking, running, reading, going to the library, going to a coffee shop, going to a workout class, whatever it is, do things alone, start to feel comfortable with being alone. It is going to help you so, so much when you graduate. All right, everyone take a water and coffee break. Now we're, we're back to it. We're back to it with number four. Number four that I kind of just came up with, jotted down really quickly. This is arguably the most important thing you will hear all day today. I think that this is the most, most important thing out of this entire episode. If there's one that I want you to listen to, it's this one right here. So this is something that I wish somebody in the fitness industry, when I was a freshman in college, would have said. I followed the gym shark girls and they really didn't talk much about anything honestly when i was a freshman it was 2017 2018 and they just posted workouts and posted them flexing and that was it there was no talk about mental health there was no talk about nutrition they weren't very helpful in my opinion the girls that i followed the basic gym shark girlies before people started to become real like fitness influencers and that became a whole thing but i wish that somebody that I followed who was a fitness influencer in the industry or whatever said this, stop comparing yourself to people who work out for a living. Stop comparing yourself to the fitness influencers for the love of God. I, I wish I could scream it from the mountains because I'm gonna tell you right now, the two lives that you're comparing your life to this girl who's a fitness influencer or whatever, they aren't even comparable. And I can tell you from firsthand experience because I've been on both sides of the spectrum, okay? I was a student, full-time student. I worked full-time. I was balancing sorority. I was balancing boyfriend, boys, friendships, drama, trying to eat healthy, trying to show up to the gym, trying to do well in school. I did all of it, okay? And I would sit there and I would be in a constant state of defeat because I would look at these girls who were absolutely ripped and post workouts and all, all the gym shark girlies, right? And I would feel so defeated because I'd be like, why don't I look like them? I work so hard at the gym. I'm doing my best with my nutrition. I feel like I'm the healthiest out of all of my friends that I know. Why am I not looking like them? Okay, and I would literally be so defeated. I would have a good day and then I would scroll on Instagram, I would see them and I'd be like, why don't I look like that? Like I wish that I had genetically, I used to, oh my God, I used to say this to Nash, my boyfriend, so embarrassing now, but I would tell him my hips, I have big hips, bones, like my pelvis, my actual hips, large, okay? I would tell Nash that I wish that my bones, like my actual hip bones were smaller because I don't look like those fitness girls. Like they just have the smallest waist and their bones are just smaller. My rib cage is huge, okay? I have flared ribs. And it was just, I was like, I don't even look like them. Like my genetic makeup isn't even like, I, I would compare everything. I would compare everything and I would constantly feel defeated in my journey. And I know you guys have probably seen the TikTok of the girl, it went viral, but she said, comparison is the thief of joy. Like snaps to that, she spit some fire, fire, like advice in that video to her one guy friend that was, you know, I think he was pressing, I think he was like doing dumbbell presses or whatever. But comparison is the thief of, thief of joy, 100%. You will not be happy if you are constantly comparing yourself to these girls. Now, the other side of the spectrum is where I'm at now. I wouldn't say, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a fitness influencer. I just feel like I'm, I'm Sophia and I share my life with you guys. I'm an online coach and personal trainer, but I do do this as a living. I consider working out as a part of my job. Um, not for me to like look good necessarily, but I experiment everything on myself before I give it to my clients. So anytime I'm doing new programming, anytime I have a new exercise I wanna try out, I'm doing it on myself first before I'm giving that to my clients to make sure that it's something that they can do for sure. So I, that's a part of my work, that's a part of my job. It's not like I work out for a living, but again, it's part of this whole thing that I'm doing. 
And I've been on both sides. And I can tell you from being on the fitness side right now, being in this career, I have a lot more free time on my hands. I have a lot more time to work out. Okay. I mean, I obviously I work for myself, so I'm able to schedule what hour, whatever hours I want, whenever, but I have a lot more time to work out and dedicate to living a healthy lifestyle and be fully in it. Okay. And that looking back at myself, like old self, baby self, beginning of her journey before she decided she wanted to do this for a career, looking back when I would think about how I felt, I'm, I almost like laugh at myself because it's like, they're not even comparable. I would literally tell myself, I'd be like, so why are you even comparing these two? Like they're not even, you can't compare them. You can't compare these two lifestyles, okay? Now this isn't dissing anybody who is a fitness influencer who does this as a career. I'm not saying that they don't work hard because this job is not easy at times. It can be very difficult and very overwhelming. And there can be a lot that needs to be done depending on what they do specifically in this career not saying that you know we slash they don't work hard but the timing like not having to be a student full-time not having to work 40 hours a week not having to you know go out and party and, and go to these day tasks and do all these things that part of my life is is done and that was a majority of the time that kind of took you know everything over it took it took a lot of of that so basically what I'm trying to tell you is just stop comparing yourself not only to other people but to fitness influencers okay just don't do it, it it's not fair to yourself you will be in a constant state of, of defeat and you don't want that you don't want that for your mental health you don't want that for your physical health it's just not worth it this is advice for all of my college girlies have fun have fun do it all, do it hard, obviously be safe, be responsible, you know, buddy system always, don't take a drink from somebody that you don't know, that you didn't see being made yourself, all of the basics, but do it all, do it all, do it freaking hard, and have, have the best time of your life. Go study abroad, go on the date dash, go on the weekend bender, go travel the world with your best friends. I mean, these four years of your life are some of the most insanely fun times of your life. And when you spend your time wishing that you looked like someone else, wishing that you had the life of a certain influencer, wishing that you looked like this fitness influencer, wish that your body looked different. I'm telling you right now, you're wasting your time doing it. Be in the moment, enjoy living next to your best friends because the post-grad life is extremely difficult. One day you are snuggling up hungover, you know, disgusting and debriefing what happened the night before at a date dash and next to all of your best friends. And the next day you're living across the country from them. It's insane. It happens so quickly. So do not waste your time and just have fun. Just have fun. Okay. And that is, that's a wrap. That is the bestie at chats with soap episode number two. We talked today about a lot of good things about how to do the college thing. And, and I guess I can just end this with that. You're not going to be perfect in college. Okay. It's a crazy insane time. Every single day is very different in college. Um, but like I said, just have fun, slow down, live in the moment and be safe. Thank you so, so much for listening. Let me know what you learned today. What your favorite thing that you heard today. If you have any advice, for anybody who is in college right now, leave it in the comments. This is a community that we need to rely on each other for, you know, all everything and anything when it comes to trying to balance healthy lifestyle, especially while in college. But thank you so much again for joining and I will see you soon.